In this screencast, we will consider how a closed loop system responds to a change in set point. And we will consider the blending process as the example. In the blending process, we will change the manipulated variable W2, which is the mass flow into the tank from stream two. We will be controlling the mass fraction of species A in the tank, which is referred to as X, and that's our control variable in the process. In particular here, we will consider a step change to the process. We'll start off at our steady state value of 0 0.025 for X, and this is a value we considered in previous screencasts. And then we'll consider a step change to the process. So in deviation variables, we will have a change in set point from zero up to 0 0.01. In the Laplace domain for a step change, we have a one over S. What does that look like? So in time, we have X starting at 0 0.025, and then at time zero, it steps up to 0 0.025. 0, 0.035, a change of 0 0.01. So this is a change to our set point value. Then we can go ahead and use our closed loop transfer function to calculate how x will change given a change in the set point. And we will use deviation variables throughout. So we can just go ahead and plug in our closed loop transfer function calculated that in the previous screencast. And the KP in this transfer function is the proportionality constant in our controller. So this first term here is G closed loop. And then the second term is our change in set point. And for convenience here, and also to get a little bit better intuition, we'll define this variable tau, our time constant. And we'll define that as one over four, 10 to the minus four, minus 2.5 times 10 to the minus six KP. So this is the constant term in our denominator. Now we can rewrite X prime of S in terms of tau. And we can write that as negative 2.5 times 10 to the minus eight, KP times tau, so we incorporated the height of our step there. That's our overall gain. And then as the denominator, we have S times tau S plus one. So we can take the inverse Laplace transform to calculate X in the time domain. So now we just have 2.5, 10 to the minus eight, KP times tau times one minus e to the minus t over tau. Now that we have this expression for x prime of t going from t equal to zero all the way out to t equal to infinity, we can inspect this expression to see what it tells us about the closed loop dynamics. One thing we can see is that the process is gonna evolve over a time constant of tau, and we can change tau by changing kp our controller constant. We can also look at the long-term behavior of the system. So the long-term behavior of the system is going to depend on the value of KP. If you remember, we want the system to track our step point. We want it to have a step change of 0 0.01. So we can calculate as KP goes to negative infinity, x prime of t at long time will go to 0 0.01. However, if kp is finite, let's say negative 1,000, x prime of t will go to 0 0.086. So we will have steady state error. And this problem of steady state error is often a problem with proportional control. And so if we want to achieve zero steady state error, we may need to add an additional term to our control law, such as an integral term.